Hi there, and thank you for joining Change I Am Possible, India's first future tech podcast. Do kindly subscribe, support, and share. So, COVID nineteen has brought tremendous uncertainty to our lives, businesses, and also the education industry, impacting both the students and the teaching community. So, I spoke to three leading torch bearers from the education industry to understand what the future holds for the students, teachers, and the education institutes. So, I have with us. Dr. Lavi Raj Gupta. He is the Executive Dean, Faculty of Technology and Sciences at the lovely Professional University, a leading light in the field of technical and higher education in the country. In 2001, he was appointed as an Assistant Controller Technology, Ministry of IT, Government of India, by the Honorable President of India. Then I have Dr. Rajinder Singh Samwar, who is the Director, Vice Chancellor at the Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research. ACSIR has been and given an institution of national importance by Act of Parliament. He was a PhD fellow at the National Academy of Sciences, who has received various national and international awards as a scientist. And last, I have Chaitanya Chinchlikar, who has a multi-faceted career in film and media education, an active speaker at seminars and conferences. He has spearheaded the growth of the education. Digital media, animation, and VFX business for Mukta Arts Limited. He is currently the Chief Technology Officer and Vice President, Business Development at Whistling Woods International. So, Dr. Lavi, uh, I think we can start from you. So, how do you see the COVID nineteen impacting the education industry, and do you see a long-standing impact on this, on the the psychological impact? I mean, on the students, you know, plus plus the graduating students, uh, there, because there's so much uncertainty, right? So, yeah, yeah. yes, Dr. Gupta. <laughs> See, uh, good morning, everybody. It's it's a pleasure, Eddie and Sanan, to be here with all of you. See, uh, let me reiterate what I what I always present. Past uh, the WHO declared it as pandemic. It is going to be the new normal. Let us all understand this. And when you talk about the impact of COVID nineteen in education. i see a very positive pra- pragmatic change it's a paradigmatic change positive paradigmatic change which covid 19 has brought in wedged in for education in the entire world i'll support and scaffold my thoughts see prior to 9th march or 10th march before holi nobody was willing to deliver online nobody was willing to gather knowledge online people were after videos funny videos and they were enjoying it they were not retaining them they were just meant for joking around but the moment it was declared on both sides on really both sides of the river the teaching side and the learning side has completely had a mind shift change people or faculty or teachers who have never faced the camera who never delivered their handwritten notes to the students using annotators using highlights and using pen scribe are now very well versed you see their videos you see their confidence and you actually can really look to the positive impact which on teachers i'm not talking about uh, higher education teachers go deep down to the primary teachers actually they were very shy of creating videos because they considered that videos are meant for only tiktok and some youtube funs but now their videos are meaningful their view videos are translating basic concepts to the student and on to the other side in the learning mode the students were little casual that whatever is being presented their screen time was a leisure screen time their screen time prior to this covid 19 was more towards you know fun but now look to all the students be it a primary student be it a doctoral student they're very serious about what contents what kind of interaction is happening i i would thank rather the present scenario to create that mind shift change both in the teachers and the learners the kind of assessment even the school teachers are giving to the to the students they are not cut copy paste which earlier they were 
now they were more thoughtful on to the content which they have been delivered let us look to the positive side of the thing and i personally feel and i personally believe because i have seen sea change in my faculty members and in my learners i've got 32000 learners with me and i've got 3000 faculty members teaching those 32000 plus learners i've seen a sea change i've seen the confidence both in the teachers and the learners lovely i i i must appreciate that in times to come and as you as you very rightly said that it is going to have a longish impact because it is not just just minuscule or minimal change which has brought in it has actually changed the mindset of the people so now remote tutorship and remote mentorship is the new normal which we are all adapted to and now we are taking up further lovely 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 perspective and and somehow i feel that this natural disaster will accelerate that change so, so dr samwan your views on this yeah uh, i think uh, when we see how uh, the covid 19 is impacting it, the education as a whole initially we, when it happened it was a, it was considered as a big interruption a big disruption in the learning process all across even from school to colleges and universities including the research laboratories where the mentorship was something like a face to face when the supervisor and the student interact face to face when this disruption happened it was some kind of a initially a, some kind of a, a silence and a, some kind of a disappointment but if we look at the process as a whole the covid 19 has accelerated the tar- to achieve the target which we had set long back how with the growing needs of the students we can address in a clear scale which is required for this country actually required all over the world for in this the way the learning goes the, the number of learners increases this is actually the target now we can achieve it's a compulsive environment but this compulsive environment is also facilitating new inno- innovations into how we can match the same learning which a typical structured classroom running to a web oriented learning and not only that matching our target should be that it can be better than that how it can be better than that we can try to have through technologies that the proximity is felt that interaction is better than that and there is a there is a continuity of interactions the interactions i had today is on record to review tomorrow and the day after mm. which typically is not present in a classroom structure so this is an this is a situation in which all our efforts which were meant for a web oriented learning lab web oriented teaching should go into achieving the targets to make a they make the process of learning which is typically we call as a 21st century learning with the kind of uh, technology enabled this world is the technology enabled the uh, the the capable the skill sets the today's generation of students possess and the the uh, the strength of teaching of the teachers it's also an opportunity for teachers to go into a new down is to have a go into a new domain that my teaching ability is same all across whether i am in a class whether i am working with somebody mm-hmm. whether i am converse i am in conf- conversation with a student or i am remotely connected to all my my students right right uh, this, that, that, this this brings in a structure of teaching is a new new uh, mechanisms new new uh, set teaching methodology also improves with this lovely so we thank must you work for that That, that, thank you, Sanwan, Dr. Sanwan. So, I, I mean, both Dr. Gupta and Dr. Sanwan had a very positive outlook of this COVID-19. You know, so you, you rightfully mentioned that yes, this is an opportunity for the teachers to relearn and adapt to the new world, and somehow adversity creates opportunity and also accelerate new innovation, and that's what we're seeing. Uh, Chaitanya, 
can you share some light on what do you think is going to be the impact i mean yes we have seen the positive side right but do you also see that there's going to be a negative side to it because if you see there's there's a there's a huge the, the media is projecting as a complete negative thing right they're saying things are going to look at least the two three quarters is going to look very bad there's definitely people are talking about the psychological impact on the students that, that, that there's talks about how the graduating students are going to be living in an uncertain future where there's no jobs and things like that chetan you know, what's your views on this something like that so let's talk about the graduating students first yes there is absolutely no doubt that uh this is not the ideal situation to be graduating in right mm-hmm. uh in many cases it may not even be possible for uh students to finish their entire uh, learning that they needed to um uh, this year or d- during the lockdown especially in careers and uh education which is applied right while theory and conceptual stuff can be done online when it uh, when it's about doing when it's about application based especially in team work it's very difficult it's almost impossible to do it online so those students may not even be able to finish their uh, edu- their uh, graduation or post graduation or whatever program they're doing during the lockdown so i mean that will get pushed by a few weeks or a few months that said um what uh, i mean the the uncertainty that the graduating students have is something that is present all over the world so yes it is unfortunate but if you sit down and hold your hand you know you just sit and put your head in your hands and that's it right so it's not going to give you any benefit what i would rather look at is as a graduating student i would look at the positive side as well mm. if i am at home for 4 months or 3 months or 2 months or whatever i have an opportunity to add to my skill set mm. almost every single e learning platform is offering content almost for free Mm. right mm. maybe a few hundred rupees here and there there is no reason why somebody who uh, is a mechanical engineer or electrical engineer can't do a coding course or uh, somebody who's uh, you know someone say maybe doing uh, i don't know marketing can't do a data science course online and add to their skill set or somebody who like me like uh, i've been i've done a um, cognitive science online program i've done a uh uh you know uh, data cv ml big data ai cv ml uh, mm. program so i don't need to do it but you know it's h- how much netflix content are you really going to watch mm. at mm. some point you have to you know put some learning into your brain especially if you are used to it so um see there are two sides to every uh, situation so you decide each student has to decide as to what side they want to look at they can you know sar pakad ke baith sakte hai ki are mera kya hoga or learn right especially learn at a time when you know god forbid uh, you may need the extra skill set uh, because the world will change after uh, covid 19 for all you know uh, you know if uh, you know if somebody was not really sure uh, in in the medical fraternity right if mm-hmm. you know some of the doctors who aren't say the top of their class and were not really sure about getting jobs they probably will now because there's going to be a big huge push in healthcare spending mm-hmm. right so mm-hmm. every single doctor is going to be worth his or her weight in gold or every single uh, person who is doing bsc chemistry uh, pharma is going to be uh, up right so Uh, for some students yes i mean if anybody is graduating from an event management program yeah for the next year or so it looks bleak but if somebody is graduating from any of these industries which is going to get a huge push uh, gaming online gaming technology ott content uh, creation mm-hmm. um uh, uh, healthcare media and entertainment um analytics you know analytics coding big data all these are going to get a push so you have to decide what it is that you want to uh, kind of how you want to approach it the other thing and i think uh, both the earlier speakers briefly alluded to it is uh, see what happens in a in a crisis and we've seen this before and we are seeing it now as well is that your it accelerates uh, major changes which have been uh, happening in a creeping mechanism otherwise right so the 1991 economic crisis forced us to open up and liberalize the mm. current uh, economic crisis that has been caused because of the lockdown has forced us to change our not forced us but has 
hastened the change of our agricultural policy mm-hmm. has hastened the change of our uh, you know uh, our uh, the, the way we look at uh, medical um, infrastructure and investment in healthcare right or whether we look at the concept of that apart from a, a blue collar and a white collar worker there is a third type of worker who is neither of those two and who is moving from one city to another or one town or village to another just to work they are not going there for sustenance they get enough sustenance in their village right with probably cleaner air but they are coming to the cities because they want a better life so this concept of the indian version of what is called the american dream mm. that there is a massive uh, you know 1 crore 1 and a half 2 crore population of this country that is always chasing the indian dream right we've been made aware of this population and now you can actually address this population so we've already been doing a lot of it through startups and other things but now you actually know that this population exists and you can make targeted policies so crisis always brings out multiple avenues and opportunities mm-hmm. similarly in education what has been happening and especially at uh, uh, you know i mean we do it at whistling woods and i started to see uh, it being done in very very few k12 schools but the concept of the flipped classroom that's right? very important so for the for the foreseeable past uh, it ha- the the teacher and the books have been the source of information which is kind of pointless in today's day and age because all the information you want is available at the click of a button so why do you want a teacher to read from a book and write something on a blackboard which some third person is then taking notes on it's complete waste of time money energy effort everything right why can't you just tell the student tomorrow we are going to study this this is the book please this is the internet you know with data being so cheap and mobile you know we have 500 million mobile phones now in india smartphones in india and 700 million people have internet access go online or look at books and read up everything that you can about this particular subject tomorrow we will use the classroom time to actually analyze it and discuss it right so analytical uh a uh, 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 role of the teacher is what it is for it's the teacher is not there for information dissemination uh, my alexa can disseminate information to me yaar why why do i need a human being for that right i need the human being to use their brain to use their mind to analyze it to give their opinion to give multiple opinions on it so the concept of flipped classroom is something that covid 19 induced academia has accelerated we've been doing classes for about 1200 odd students now online with 300 400 teachers and when we started we encouraged everybody to adopt the flipped classroom model so tell your students tomorrow in fact when the class is scheduled in the notes it's clearly written what are we going to talk about you please go do as much research as you want get as much information and knowledge as you want and we will use the one on one interaction time to analyze it not to just give you information right so this hastening of the flipped classroom is something that i see as a huge positive and at every level both at the k12 and at the higher and technical level so while there are downsides that lack of physical interaction or you know co uh, co learning um, brings there are also upsides that these things are able to uh, generate now again it's not all uh rosy because you know if some student is kind of useless and doesn't want to do any of this there is no way for the teacher to know ye bachche ne kiya hai nahi kiya hai but you assume that you know most of them have paid money and actually want to study uh so that they will do it right so these are the four five things that i look at when it comes to how education is and is likely to go ahead given these times Lovely, uh, Chet- Chetan. I-, I thought you brought some really important points, and which I think everybody needs to ponder about that because technology is growing exponentially. Right now, there are this uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, artificial intelligence, blockchain. All of this is, is going to accelerate 
I think not just the education sector, but all of the uh, sectors around are going to be impacted. Though all of these technologies is at its nascent stage, it's cusp, but as soon as it matures, it stands to impact and disrupt mankind. And I guess, you know, you rightfully said, these are the times which you have, you need to spend and, and not waste your time, but use it productively by learning and relearning. And, and you rightfully said, you know, the, the internet is full of education, MOOCs, massive open online courses, which are available free free of course right uh, uh, institutes like mit and stanford are giving it free now what i believe is stopping people is the intent and desire not the education the education is uh, right over there do you see the online education platform which is offering a uh, free education versus the brick and mortar education with with the traditional legacy uh, driven uh, structure being impacted with this uh, doc, dr gupta what do you think uh, see uh, both the mode of education the brick and mortar and uh, the ee learning mode they both have their own positive sides in the brick and mortar the emotions of an individual the varying emotions of an individual with respect to the content which an individual is delivering plays a vital role in enticement because say for example i've i've created uh, my own course i'm i'm running three courses online uh i'll i'll not be bringing that real time participation i'll not be bringing that you know emotions associated to the concept be it you know i teach iot i teach data analytics i teach uh, robotics online the only thing what this present scenario has done is that it has let people learn on their own associating and thinking the best of the brick and mortar i'll give you an example uh in the initial uh, phrases i might sound a little you know off beat but you know think of every one of us we have cooked that dish at our home and how we have cooked that dish is we saw it on youtube and then we created our own personal fusion to that dish and we created some new form of that dish now this is what i call it as mindset shifting to flipped of the classroom this is a perfect example of flipped classroom wherein you are you are looking to somebody else's creation and then trying to recreate what somebody else has created with your own mindfulness and thoughts see in engineering this is very very important than that you are not solving numericals because life never gives you numericals to solve if you are going on a road driving a car life will never give you a numerical to solve because if you are solving a numerical to overtake a truck it'll take you at least 45 minutes to decide whether you are going to take overtake a truck or not life gives you problems and problem solving in this era has been deep rooted infused into the student because he or she even though i consider that they they google it they actually go and look to and browse to the resources available but that is i call it as as an opportunity i'll give you some some concepts which we at lp you have implemented we are not talking about lab at home we design the experiments in such a way that they can do those experiments at home and when you talk about computer science graduates or mechanical engineering graduates they've got whole load of opportunities available with them if i want to teach the law of parallelogram forces or if i really want to teach artificial neural network they can do it at home it is absolutely analogous to creating a dish because you already have the spices and the contents available you see somebody else's video and then you create experience or diy is flourishing like anything i can share the experiences of lpu we have completely revisited and reengineered our hands on experience practices and thus our students are doing wonderful brick and mortar plays a very important role brick and mortar has got that emotional touch but you know we all talk about artificial intelligence but we forget that there is a human tendency of induced intelligence and emotional intelligence 
in these times you need to tra create a trade off between the ai models which you are creating has got that induced intelligence in it or not and has got the emotional component to handle the input given to create a desired output i'm i'm very much uh, uh, positive about uh, these kind of things and we do at lpu we do whole lot of experiments starting from assessment to newer evaluation mechanism you know uh, i am must share that with you because i've got learned uh, people around what we do is creating a zoom interaction we have our own application setting called lpu live and in interaction you ask questions and people can answer it on lpu live directly in real time and we also in that lpu live have created our own copyrighted mechanism to judge the content the examples the fluency in the delivery so it's a five point assessment done by a learner for a teacher to review that what is happening in real time this is where technology comes into picture this is where icing on the cake to brick and mortar comes into the picture right right so so, so doc, doc, dr gupta you were talking about problem solving and experiential learning experiential learning i believe is something which virtual reality pushes to another level because i mean you know students when you're sitting at, 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 at a classroom they are forced to possibly 50 or 60 students you know they have to all look at the blackboard and they have to learn that's about it. there's no experience i'm sure there is experiential hand on based learning but you know when when it comes to virtual reality you're touching feeling everything and uh, so that that technology takes it to another level dr sangwan what are your views i think that the web oriented learning it also needs to align with the needs of the student and the reality the reality is that class is a cohort and class has a structure where it is there you have a lecture or a teaching schedule for a course something like 45 minutes to 60 minutes probably that may not be suited for a web type of a, a say lecture in my opinion the web lecture should be short because it is important that student is in a some kind of a virtual class all at a time so that interactions can expand interactions can increase we should attract students to the lecture not compel student to the lecture mm. that can happen then we look at our own psychology how long we can learn from a lecture and what is the efficiency of learning into first 10 minutes to the last 10 minutes in a 60 minutes or first 10 minutes to last 10 minutes in a 30 minutes i think the shorter lectures more focused lectures are important mm. we all know it is possible that the most knowledgeable teacher may not be the best teacher mm -hmm. therefore it gives an opportunity to combine the multiple ways to teach better somewhere concepts can be understood better by a, by the art of teaching somewhere content can be deeper and enriched by more knowledgeable people so some kind of a cooperativity allow is allowed in this web oriented we are to actually naturalize it to the students that you are feeling that you are in a class and this class should not be a mere academic mm. which is also beauty of a class depending on teacher to teacher some of the teachers make the class attractive going little beyond to academics to a some kind of a social interactions or this kind of a free interaction that should be a part of this whole system sometimes somewhere can be a free interactions only this way we actually acclimatize the students attached to it and are attracted to it this learning process in shorter courses and it goes beyond mm. actually when we have a multi same course is being taught you have in like bigger institutions same course is taught by multiple teachers by in different sections and every teacher is knowledgeable but sometimes the way it is taught and way it shifts from one subject one one uh, topic or sub topic to next this transition is abrupt and sometimes it may not be uniformly acceptable to all the teach all the students this also gives that kind of opportunity you know uh, academy of scientific and innovative research acsir 
is an institution of national importance like IITs. Mm. And uh, this is located uh, in 25 different cities mm. and has 40 academic centers. All national laboratories of CSIR are our academic centers. And there are many institutions beyond that. Mostly we have uh, PhD students. Our PhD students are close to 5,000. It is the largest in the country and one of the largest in the world, only in science and engineering. We have a smaller number of master's students. It, and we run courses. So far, we were running these courses in each and every academic center. The new, uh, so the web-oriented facility, it gives an access to, the students can have an access to a lecture by the best teacher. And best is not uniformly best. Some teacher is best for a student. Another student is best for B teacher. And you have a multiple <coughs> choice. It also gives an opportunity. What, how we evaluate students. Yes. In a conservative system, what we say is we give certain questions. The students attempt those questions in a, in a specified time. And, and then we evaluate them barking. It also, what do we mean by learning? If, if, if I'm a student, today I know everything, if I claim it otherwise, but tomorrow I may forget. Mm -hmm. So is my rank, is my rating or evaluation go false down? No. We are to say how the student is, as is actually adapting, is understanding the subject which we wish to teach. And today's time, it is, should be a, the reference is allowed. If you are, if one is student is focused on a subject and want to refer something, why not? One can refer something and answer because this is not in other world. It is present the same world in as uh, Dr. Gupta said is in the real world. You have a problem. You have access also, which is available quickly online. You need not need not even uh, turn on the find the book and this and, and all that. So this should be a usual how we move fast, work efficiently, learn efficiently, and recollect efficiently. Mm. That should be a mechanism in which we evaluate student. How good one is at to solving that problem, whether it is a, is a classroom problem or a real life problem, with all reference, assisted, and all that. Ways, no harm in having a, you know, having a, a open book uh, examinations. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Because there it is where, how quickly know where I can find it, how I can narrate it myself, not the copying the same thing from there. And this is how you can put up these things. It brings in uh, innovations. So, uh, Chaitanya, what are your views on this? Um, so, let me look at, let me kind of narrow focus this a little bit, uh, especially on um, immersive learning, right? So, the classroom is what you would call. Um, is the equivalent of watching movies in a theater, right? Is captive community viewing, where in the classroom, everybody is captive and it's community viewing, community learning. E-learning is non-captive individual viewing, which is very similar to what happens on OTT platforms, right? So digital content is captive a uh, non-captive individual viewing because I can't tie you down in front of the computer or the phone. You can walk out and or you can just put it on the camera and the thing off and you don't know whether anybody's learning. But so it's non-captive individual learning. Immersive learning is captive individual learning. Right? Which essentially allows deeper learning to to happen. Because it is captive, there are no distractions. Mm. You are able to get an additional significantly more percentage of the individual's mind share and mind space to focus on what is being uh, shown or explained or, um, um, you know, audio visual um, immersive content that's been Exp that's been uh, that's been kind of th that the individual is experiencing in a captive individual viewing method leads to deeper learning. So if something takes say forty minutes in a captive community viewing setup to learn, in an immersive setup it will probably take half that time because there is there are no distractions. So you're not you're not battling between mm. fifty things that uh, the human mind is thinking about. 
you've got them in a captive individual viewing mechanism uh, met methodology and you're able to explain to them much deeper right so essentially what what immersive learning does is it crashes the the uh, the um, learning time when it comes to theory or concepts what this also allows them to do is allows them to spend more time analytically it allows them to spend more time on um, asking the question what if right on looking at other opinions and other points of view of once a concept or a theory is learned it allows them to apply it more it applies to uh, allows them to spend more time on application unfortunately what happens in a lot of our education is it's a, lo a lot of it is tick the boxes right so uh, did you read all these chapters yes did you do you know them yes can you answer them in a uh, in a in an exam yes oh very good you are educated now right while completely forgetting the fact that you know 6 months after the exam is over the person won't even remember 90% of of what they studied so i mean if you if you come into my office there's one big thing on my wall which says when you have forgotten what you studied for your exams what remains is education mm. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. immersive learning helps you incredibly to augment the conceptual deep learning of concepts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the more you are able to do it yes production cost is slightly expensive actually much more expensive but you save significantly on learning time teaching time and you are able to use that time significantly more for analytical and practical and application uh, iterative application based uh, usage hmm. right so it actually will cause a complete paradigm shift in the way that learning happens now that said everything can't necessarily be taught in an immersive methodology right some things can be taught some things can't be taught I can't teach somebody how to play the tabla in VR. वो जब तक सामने गुरु शिष्य नहीं बैठता है और जब तक वो चलाता नहीं है and there isn't the concept of what's called working under supervision, right? So medical education, um, filmmaking, uh, creative arts, performing arts, seventy five percent of the learning in these fields comes from what's called working under supervision, right? where essentially you make a film a bunch of people see it your faculty sees it and tells you where you went wrong then you make it again not the same film another film then you make it again then you make it again then you make it again and hopefully by the 10th time you have ironed out most flaws it's not possible to iron out all flaws humanly impossible right but you may be able to iron out most flaws that's exactly how the the uh, industries and learning that is applied based that is application based that is practical happens working under supervision is very difficult to do in a e learning in a distance learning setup for that you need the brick and mortar there is absolutely no two ways about mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. i can't teach somebody uh, how to be a excellent cutting master right in fashion the the i mean most people think that the fashion designer is the most important yeah well he or she is because of the creativity but when it comes to execution the most important is the cutting master he or she gets paid the most it's not possible for somebody to be taught how to cut cloth appropriately in an e learning mode it's just not possible right so there are some things that you can do in immersive that you can do in an e learning mode and there are some things that you need people to come together in a brick and mortar co-learning working under supervision structure right so it's essentially you have to balance both it can't be one or the other i think the the key to look at uh, and the factor to, the key factor to look at is efficiency right what is more efficient if immersive learning delivered through an e learning platform is more efficient when it comes to learning theory and concepts do it mm. but if brick and mortar co-learning with faculty and students and peers is more efficient for learning the application of these concepts and theories then that is what should happen whatever has the most impact 
in addition to being efficient is what you should look at lovely chetan i mean you rightfully pointed out that captive learning is going is, is the key right with virtual reality you strapped onto the onto the headset Correct. and it's also collecting all the data you know while while you are uh, uh, while you learning besides that you know you 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 built in a little bit of artificial intelligence into the machine learning you know do interactive learning that 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 kind of pushes the paradigm I, we talking about social distancing you know at this point of time university we are unsure when it's going to start right so what are the measures that you the, the institute is taking to maintain education continuity post lockdown and, and at this point of time the remote education uh, remote everything you know meeting business is, is a big big conversation going forward so so dr gupta we start with you so what are we uh, doing for uh, continuity of education uh see uh, w- whatever i'm going to speak is very specific to uh, lpu only because uh, the moment uh, who declared it as pandemic uh, our research team started working on that how do we ensure s- uh, social distancing and how do we ensure safe distancing between people uh we came up with uh, a patent uh, patented device uh, its name is kavach you can read about it uh, it's all across the media it's known as kavach now that kavach uh, if you wear it if you post it on your uh, pocket it's an iot device which captures the human presence around you and it actually uh, tells you that if somebody is in the vicinity which is compromising the social distancing i'm talking about this product because in times to come this is a very frugal kind of innovation which we have done and it is going to market uh, very soon we have got orders from uh, abu dhabi germany and uh, indian railways and what not we are going to implement the same technology there in our classrooms so there is a covered sitting on each and every student and the social distancing while even they are in their labs or in their classrooms can be very well taken care of this i am talking about in a scenario wherein the regulatory bodies and the statutory bodies agrees to these kind of device specific social distancing maintenance because this can be done in one institute this can be done in one or two more institutes but you know they'll have to look holistically as a as a as a wide angle they'll have to look so that before they come up with a notification or a guideline on starting up the classes because we all know that the classrooms have got a very fixed dimension in which you can accommodate a specific number of students so therein it is going to be challenging we'll have to actually wait for the right time to come when when i say right time clinically that right time would be a we all have understood the basic prevention mechanism of this covid because this is going to go a long way who has also narrated it their own story so it is uh, still a long way to uh, an institute to open up and um, uh, begin the classes right dr sang on your views i think uh, uh, s- with the covid 19 and its transmission from human to human because of proximity of two people and that happens it's it calls for a new thought that we there are the requirements of a change in behaviors of mm. all of us at least in the near term we do not know such things going happening but in any case in case in case of a normal flu or a common cold also these kind of uh, transmissions to happen because we can tolerate them and because they go away within 48 hours so without causing much of the harm so we ignore that but see, considering the situations that emerge we are to actually have a compromise of how proximity we maintain and how distance we maintain and this should be a societal behavior mm. and this should be an automatic uh, kind of a system in place with us in our our uh, nature we are to have, have our teaching in that way so that we minimize the risk we cannot eliminate the risk and who knows the risk may not be like that as it exists today tomorrow those risks may not be there but for a continuum and to avoid future risks we are to have a comp- have a change in our whole uh, 
behavior things and maintain a compromise of proximity and this is how is a as a as a human a kind of a new human evolution in terms of behavior mm-hmm. aspect we have to adopt it right and we should accept it and we should move forward right right uh, so, so chaitanya i mean so, uh, yeah i mean i have a slightly different the you know everybody talks about the covid curve and we should flatten it and all that and yeah that's fine you also have a reaction curve right um which essentially happens uh, which is a, it's uh, it's it's about how you react to situations where there is superficial change of lifestyle and there is deep change of lifestyle um right now what we are seeing when it comes to uh, everybody's response to covid-19 and corona virus is superficial change of lifestyle physical distancing wearing masks uh, not touching people whatever staying 6 feet away sanitizing your hands every 15 minutes washing your hands hands every whatever hour these are all superficial uh, ways of dealing with a current problem this cannot and hopefully should not become your lifestyle forever because then you know it's stupid you want to be able to wrap your you know put your arm arm around a friend you want to be able to you know make out with a boy or a girl or whatever right without having to worry you want to have you know one night stand at some point of time um you know going to like you know pull out some rapid test in a someone you meet at a party and say boss there are test karne de before we can make out aisa hota nahi so you the what essentially has to happen is the deep seated the, the 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 deep changes and the deep reactions are the ones that will make these superficial reactions irrelevant tomorrow and the deep reactions are boost your immunity stop eating frozen foods right stop filling your body with crap right do basic things that will ensure that you your natural immunity goes up yes you will never ever be able to have immunity against every single problem in the world but try and take it to a point where at least your body is healthy enough to fight back right so build yourself and structure your lifestyle in such a way that your that where you're not yeah you know have fun for the time being but make sure that short term fun does not impact your immunity in the long term right things like smoking so i used to be a regular smoker you know right for the past well since 16th of uh, may for 13 14th of uh, march i haven't had a cigarette i have two packets lying in my drawer still right because i realize what impact that it has and it's not necessarily on on only on corona uh, uh, covid 19 or corona virus it's an it's an immunity depressing uh, depressant right i am um, my body mass index is not what it should be for a body to successfully be able to fight off uh, a virus people who are fat who are obese do have a problem and it's immunity across the board right so you try and you try and do that right so it's your deep seated lifestyle changes is really what's going to prepare you in the long term short term mein 3 months 6 months ye sab theek hai right physical distancing or ye karo aur wo karo the moment a vaccine comes 50 70 90% of this will all go down the drain and then we will again be back in 10 years to a situation where there is another you know sars dash cov3 where you're again doing all the shit for a year why because you haven't fixed your core problem so i think again like you know crisis brings opportunity even this it should be an opportunity for all of us to e- evaluate our individual lifestyle choices and make those deep seated changes so yeah it's fine all these changes are okay they're superficial i mean with the moderna vaccine two days ago as we as we kind of see the rating if if it kind of works out uh, you know who knows december new years everybody will still be in goa hanging out partying together hugging each other who knows right but and they should do that i hope they do that at some point of time but that doesn't mean that they let their natural immunity down so it's it's essentially that's what you have to look at 
Right, right. But Chetan, yeah, so rightfully said that there obviously there are positives of it, and you, yeah, you need to change it from core, and and if you change, you get get your immunity, you're pretty much sorted. I'm just gonna try and squeeze in one last question, and my humble request is, I mean, you know, if you guys can just keep the answers extremely short, because because I know it, it, it's it's taking a little yeah, time. Yeah, so yeah. so the so the lower middle class. And the middle class families are the most deeply impacted by COVID nineteen. Education expense has been a burden for families. You know, students mm-hmm. loan. So, should the government and education institutes provide relief during these difficult times by either uh, providing free or discounted education to the people mostly impacted by uh, COVID nineteen? Doctor Gupta. See, uh, it is not free or discounted. there has to be a legitimate framework you cannot just simply take the easiest way out of having free education or discounted education you need to create a schema in which free or discounted are not just simply the controllers they are not the boundary conditions you can craft various means and mechanisms of easing out the tight jacket right now we all understand that everybody is into tight jacket see let us talk about even the upper middle class or the upper class if they are into business their business has has really gone to dump and nobody knows how it is actually going to escalate or come to the normal uh, scale so all the educational institutes and uh, i i beseech that uh, people like dr sangwan people like uh, mr chaitanya and me of course who have been into experiencing education since long just not think of free education or discounted education we need to come up with something easing out emis segmentization laminate laminating means it is all about finances na the distribution of finances does not have boundaries of just give it for free pro bono or just give some discounts these are the times when you need to legitimately think of all the people across the board and craft some mechanism we at lpr are doing our bit of things uh in in the way of scholarships creating stretched out times and whole lot of things so not just uh, according to me not just free or discounted right you'll have to go uh, a mile deeper because this is right, right, not right. Uh, just a superficial kind of thing yeah yeah Th- thank you so and and maybe i was uh, uh, erred in articulating it properly right uh, dr sangwan your views sincerity seriousness and sensitivity and these three parameters they vary from individual to individual if there are hardships faced by anybody all across even not only students some may the others the persons may also have hardship we should use these three as and address this problem individually in a way so that we collectively we can move through some of the things can be absorbed some of the things can be actually facilitated mm. so that we do not create a negativity or create a, a an improper a uh, kind of a loss to a program whether it is learning teaching facilities and everything we must evaluate it carefully with three s seriousness sensitivity and sincerity perfect perfect and we can go through lovely lovely very well, well put sir uh, chetan your views what does kind of what, what does the what does money represent when someone in, when puts it in education right it represent the value value of something um the moment you you tell people that you know what what i am what what we are doing what you are learning is uh, valued today less than what it was valued yesterday you inherently reduce it in their reduce the importance of that in in their head demean it actually right so um yes there are real problems and yes there are financial issues and yes there are uh, i mean you know there, there are people who may not be able to afford uh, some kind of education that they wanted to do and yes it sucks it's terrible 
what can you do about it right but that doesn't mean that you start to demean and devalue what you're doing because that makes it worse mm. so again i completely empathize with with someone who cannot afford to start a program because whatever right father lost a job mother lost a job family income maybe they were running an event management company or band ho gayi hai maybe they were running a restaurant and nothing is happening for 3 6 months or whatever right and someone was supposed to say set start a, a program and they can't start it this year yeah you can't start it this year it's fine but you can start it next year take a year off do online education it's almost for free india has the lowest cost of data in the world right now at you know six, i think 5 cents a gb less than that there are there are enough uh, there's enough online learning and online education available take a break here take a drop here learn stuff next year go and do the course that you always wanted to do for all you know you may not want to do that right you may learn something online and may be great at it so everybody and everything everybody needs to adjust when that student does not do that particular course that particular year there is some educational institution who is not receiving that student so there is a potential loss of revenue for them too mm. it's mm. not just the student everybody is contributing to the fact that this one kid is not starting a program this year there's nothing you can do about it it's reality you have to accept it the other problem is if i give free education if i reduce uh, cost of education where is the burden going to go okay i have some reserves that i can use for some time after that i have to start cutting teacher salaries mm-hmm. that sucks i don't want to do that right which automatically means that the same work of effort has been putting in but oh now i value your effort less mm-hmm. so what what message are we uh, sending the teachers there so it doesn't work it's not that simple right you don't kind of look at it like that the other thing and the most important of all these bits is this um is this time pressure that everybody puts on education mm. right that you have to start high school at the age of 3 and a half or you know whatever kindergarten at the age of 3 and a half you have to graduate uh, when you are 21 you have to do this when you why who who said who said these these weird uh, uh, age guidelines i mean until i was 25 i didn't even know what i wanted to do in life right so why are you asking a 17 18 year old to start their career at the age of 18 or uh, 21 so i mean it's uh, i think it's a good time for us to evaluate uh, all these all these things and you know if you are really really sure go ahead and do it and you'll figure a way out right uh, by the way the middle class and the rural middle class are exactly who are going to benefit now with the increased credit that's going to flow through the entire system right the amount of money that's sitting with the banks right now which they want to lend we've been approached by banks that we who didn't want to do educational loans with us before saying that boss are you keen now because an educational loan is a far more stable settled and less risky loan than a business loan so i mean it th- everything every problem brings with it a uh, brings with it a silver lining so i don't see that much of a either or situation here i think you know everything can be managed lovely lovely so on that note thank you thank you chetanya dr gupta dr sangwan really appreciate you guys giving time to us thank you. insights thank you thank you very much and the impact yeah. of the industry i believe that we living in fantastic times technology is growing exponentially and, and and like all you guys said i mean we need to learn relearn and constantly re reevaluate reinnovate and grow there's so much of opportunity and and like you guys said i mean you know uh, uh, adversity creates opportunity and it, it also somehow you know pushes an innovation so we we living in fantastic times and in this point in time you know when we are at sitting at home there's so much that we one can do at this point in time and we are all in it together we need to all help each other and grow the ecosystem you know and because that's the only way we we can move, move forward so thank you once again for uh, uh, a quick yeah. uh, a yeah. quick uh, closing remark you know uh, what what kind of philosophy uh, we have instilled 
in LPU is I must share that with you. Please. We say that negative is the new positive. Right. Yeah. And yeah. that that really works well. Right. Yeah. Because it, you be yeah. beautiful put beautiful because I, i think somehow some 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 sometimes the darkest times brings the best out of you on that your, note your report being negative is the new positive <laughs> right 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 yeah, yeah. thank so you thank you it starts from there thank you so much thank you everybody it's thank you, thank it's you, been you. so thank wonderful you. being with all of you thank you thank you thank so you good. and to my listeners if you like what you see please press the subscribe button until next time see you guys bye bye thank you